start the meeting. Start the meeting. Okay, thank you, Shannon. Any changes to the agenda today? No, there aren't. Okay, any declarations of interest amongst the panel members? No, okay, we don't hear any. So our item today is a residential development located at 129 to 131 Wellington Street North. Lead planner on the file is Jennifer Ellen. Good afternoon, Jennifer. We're ready for your presentation. Please keep the presentation under 10 minutes. Uh, good afternoon, thank you. So let's start the presentation. Okay. Um, so, Hi, good afternoon. My name is Jennifer Allen. I'm the planner associated with this file for the development of 129 and 131 Wellington Street North. Um, so the, the applicant is proposing to construct two buildings of back-to-back -back stacked townhouses uh, for a total of 16 units uh, between the two buildings, so eight in each building. Um, and they are proposing uh, communal amenity area in the middle of the two buildings, as well as one flexible parking space slash loading space on the adjacent alleyway to the west of the property. So the site is located on the northwest corner of Wellington Street North and Kelly Street, uh, and Kelly Street is just south of Cannon Street East. So um, this is a photo of the site from Wellington Street North looking south. Uh, in this photo, you can see the street townhouses uh, to the north of the property, which are included in the Wellington Street North uh, cultural heritage landscape. And then you can see the high rise building uh, to the south of the subject property. Uh, this is a photo of the, the subject lands looking west on Wellington Street North. Uh, and you can see some of the lower uh, lower density residential uses uh, just west of the property. Uh, and then this is a photo of the site looking north from Kelly Street. And you can see the side of the, um, the end of the street townhouses. And then this is a photo um, on Kelly Street looking east. Uh, towards Wellington Street North, and there's some other low density residential uses um, across the street. Uh, and then this is the, a photo of the, the alleyway uh, that's west of the property, uh, and this is looking towards Cannon Street East from Kelly Street. Um, and the, the property is currently vacant, uh, and it's just grass there right now. So this is a concept plan of the proposal, the two buildings with the um, shared amenity area in the middle and uh, the landscaping on both Kelly Street and Wellington Street North. Uh, so this is the east elevation. So this would be facing, this would be along Wellington Street North uh, and it's the elevation that would uh, be continued into the uh, cultural heritage landscape. And then this is the south elevation. So the elevation along Kelly Street of the proposal. So the subject property is uh, identified as downtown urban growth center uh, on schedule E of the urban Hamilton official plan. And it is designated as downtown mixed use area on schedule E1 of the official plan. Um, so due to its scale, density, range of uses, function and identity, the downtown urban growth area uh, is planned for a range of uses uh, and it, it functions as a, one of its functions is a residential neighborhood with a large and diverse population with a range of housing types. And then the downtown mixed use area designation, uh, the central focus is creating a sense of place. It is intended to have a full range of uses uh, which includes residential uses. Um, and it is planned to create a sense of place and a comfortable pedestrian environment with uh, buildings oriented to the street. Uh, so some, some of the urban design policies that apply are that the development should respect the character, development patterns, built form and landscapes uh, of the area. Uh, it should promote quality design 
quality design that is consistent with the surrounding environment. Um, it should complement the existing massing patterns, rhythm, character, color, and surrounding context. New development should be masked to respect the existing and planned street proportions, and um, the building should gener generally be situated close to and oriented to the street. So the subject property is located within the downtown Hamilton secondary plan. It's uh, designated downtown residential. It is also uh, designated as mid-rise, which allows for up to 12 stories. And then to note, it's located within the Wellington Street North Streetscape uh, cultural heritage landscape, uh, as you can see on this map. Uh, so some of the urban design policies that relate uh, to the are included in the downtown secondary plan include that development should be masked to respect and support uh, the adjacent street proportions and be compatible with with the context of the surrounding neighborhood. Development should provide high quality spaces within the building themselves. Um, cultural heritage landscapes shall be protected by retaining major characteristics through the review of planning act applications. And development shall be oriented towards the surrounding streets um, and shall include direct pedestrian access to, uh, to the pr principal entrances. So the subject property is zoned D5 with the holding removal H21. So that's downtown residential. Um, and in this zone, back to back stack townhouses are permitted. Uh, under the 05200, they're considered multiple dwelling. And a minimum building height of 7.5 meters is required, and a maximum building height of 44 meters is permitted. Um, so the specific areas of discussion for today's uh, review panel would be, does the proposal use materials that are consistent and compatible with the surrounding context? Does the proposal complement the existing massing patterns, rhythm, character, and surrounding context? And does the proposal demonstrate sensitivity towards community identity through an understanding of the character of a place, context, and setting? So that's all for my presentation. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, quick question. The front yard is facing Wellington. Is that correct? Um, the, the front yard, it's kind of both. There's access on Kelly Street and on Wellington Street. Yeah, I meant in terms of the definition within the bylaw. Oh, my apologies. Uh, the, na the narrow dimensions considered the front yard. Is that how it works? Yes. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, we're going to ask the applicant now to make a brief presentation for about 10 minutes, please. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Can everyone hear me fine? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Can everybody hear me fine? Yeah. Can now, yes. Okay, great. Yes. Um, we'll be sharing our screen. Okay. Everyone see our screen? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for having us. My name is Elmira Yusefi. I'm from Raw Design and the Architects on the File. This is 131 Wellington Street, uh, a three-story residential proposal for the corner of Kelly and Wellington. Uh, we're hoping to provide a new alternative form of rental housing here that is not high rise and um, to introduce a gentle intensification to the Beeson neighborhood that is respectful to the heritage district just to the north of us and hopefully be a catalyst for a positive change within downtown Hamilton. Um, just briefly for our stats, we have 16 units that range from 675 square feet to about the mid 800s, proposing one parking space and 16 bicycle parking. Uh, a little pretty side view of the context here. 
Um, our site here bookends a block of heritage buildings with high rise multi residential currently on our block to the north, about 15 stories. And immediately south of us, there's an 18 story multi unit residential. And you can really see here the stark difference between the scale of housing, uh, very low rise to very high rise. The site is very well connected. Um, there's a bus route along Wellington and lots of pedestrian access to community amenities, such as a community center, shopping, and the hospital to the north. Uh, street views of our site, we're located in this vacant lot here that currently poses a uh, security issue for the neighborhood. Um, we're hoping that this development will anchor this block um, and situate us as a transition between this very low rise and this high rise to the south. Uh, there's a mixture of residential materials on site, scale and proportions we would like to respond to in the neighborhood. Uh, as you can see to our immediate north, um, there's this heritage row, uh, some are painted, some are red brick. And uh, south of us is the precast. There's some metal on um, the newer developments uh, just across the street on Wellington here with some glass and uh, brick and metal. Moving on to the floor plans, this is uh, the, the basement plan. Um, it provides a central courtyard that is bracketed by the two proposed buildings and it acts as a generous amenity space for those lower level units. But it also is a way of us um, handling the garbage disposal and the bike parking. And it's accessed off of Kelly. The ground floor, all the units are entered directly from the street, either on Wellington or Kelly. Um, and they're set back to allow for landscaping along both streets to improve the boulevard. The upper units, um, which are accessed off the, the ground floor, um, either on Wellington or Kelly, um, act as a stacked townhouse that's merged with an apartment building typology. Um, we've kind of created this new building typology for this site, which is quite unique. Um, that takes advantage of the, the staff townhouse in terms of um, our units, um, but also allows us to reduce the number of stairs and exit doors on, on the main streets. There's a, a bridge that would connect the two and provide the secondary exit for the units. The third floor, um, which is the second floor of the upper units and the access stair up to the rooftop amenity. The top four units of each building have direct access to a private rooftop terrace. And this pop-up here allows that access and also hides a small mechanical room. Um, this is still a three-story residential building, so it's a part nine building under code, um, as this fourth story pop-up acts as an accessory to that. And there's some landscaping along the edges in between the suites to create a buffer and privacy. Um, some of the materials that we're considering for the project, uh, we're looking at very high quality residential materials, uh, the two principal materials being mainly brick with accents of metal or wood in a darker tone to give it the contrast, and um, a bridge, uh, which would be made to be more of a perforated metal burlage to connect the two brick buildings. Uh, just some background on, on our office, uh, you know, Raw has done uh, many similar low-scale buildings. Uh, these the, the two projects on the left-hand side are three-story and four-story stacked uh, townhouse in Oakville. And on the right-hand side, um, we have two projects in Ossington that respond to their very eclectic context. On the left hand side here, we have uh, 35 Wabash in downtown Toronto, which are two story units with ample uh, outdoor living, both on the ground floor and on the rooftop. And those are those pop ups that we were referring to in our proposal. And on the right hand side is um, our addition to um, a, an existing office building on Dover Court. It's a two story townhouse wood frame that is added on top of an existing brick building, retrofitted to be residential, and it has a rooftop access as well with great views of downtown Toronto. Uh, some elevations, um, quite straightforward. It's really to demonstrate the relationship between the material and rhythm of the proposed and the adjacent buildings. 
we try to carry that brick data line through our proposal and um, sensitive to the height of that, um, our, our third story is within two feet of uh, the pitch roof line of the neighboring building. An elevation on Kelly Street, which shows the bridge connection uh, between the two proposed buildings, and some first investigations of how the windows would work in terms of repetition and rhythm, um, how they may differ between the, the brick and the metal. That's something that we're currently looking at. Um, an axle view that breaks down um, how these units work, while seemingly complex, it's quite straightforward. We have single level units in the basement, single uh, level unit on the ground, and the two story units above with the roof axes. Um, some preliminary rendering views of this building in context to really see how it could fit in the neighborhood, the impact of the metal and the brick proportions. A couple of views along Wellington, um, looking at the relationship between uh, the existing brick and what we're proposing here, and also how this building fits between the two uh, very different um, scale buildings, slow rise to the north and the very, very tall one to south. A view along Kelly Street, um, we find to be an appropriate scale for that street with the landscape buffer to soften that edge. Uh, a landscape plan and some materials that we're thinking and considering for the site, most notably a metal screen here, which would go along the north and south ends of the 90 courtyard to, to give the required um, security, but to still allow for views and, uh, and openness on, on the site. And that concludes our presentation. Uh, thank you very much, and we look forward to your comments. Thank you very much. Okay, we're gonna open up to questions and answers, and we're gonna start with uh, Jackie. And uh, thanks, Vince. Um, I really like the building, very attractive uh, design. The site plan also very nice, how it opens up with the courtyard. Question for the city, did I catch it right in your presentation that um, accessible units are a requirement or is it a guideline? Uh, sorry, that is a guideline. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vince. Okay, okay Robert. Thanks, Vince, and uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, question with respect to, um, uh, the size of the windows uh, in the basement unit. And maybe there's a question for the um, for the city. Are um, are light wells permitted in Hamilton? Like, would it would it be possible to 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 have larger windows um, for those basement units through the use of um, light wells? Um, through you to, uh, through the chair to you. Um, to, I'm not 100% sure. I know that urban design did have concerns about the light access to um, the basement units, uh, but I, I don't know for sure about that. I would have to double check. It, and sorry, I can add it. It's not something regulated through the zoning, no. Okay. Yeah, and sometimes um, uh, it's concerns about flooding. But, um, and then second uh, question is the... Um, the just curious as to why the um, the uh, units on the um, on the uh, the corner. Sorry, the the, the um, street names aren't uh, on here, but the um, the ground floor units um, are oriented different, right? So you have one addressing the Edge Street and one addressing. Thank you, Wellington. Um, yes. Why why that move was. Um, was made because it also results in uh, at least one of the bedrooms um, not having a window. Well, we will definitely make sure all bedrooms have windows. We're currently looking at the light wells that uh, you were referring to just earlier. Um, I should note that on the basement plan, the living rooms are oriented towards that terrace, which will have generous amount of lighting coming in. And the bedrooms are um, on the edge, which will have smaller windows, which would be appropriate for a bedroom. Um, in terms of the uh, why we have them directed to the two streets is uh, mostly because we wanted to have, there are two buildings uh, appropriately, the southeast corner is addressed to Wellington and um, 
the one to the west is addressed to Kelly. And the way that the exiting worked out, if you look in this uh, level here on the second floor, uh, they would come up um, off of the two streets and they would have to exit out. So they would either need to exit out towards the lane or towards Kelly. So um, clearly Kelly was uh, the appropriate move. And it also gives an address that's a bit more uh, residential to that second block. Okay, thank you. Those are all my questions. Thank you, Robert. You too. Uh, thank you, Myra. Um, one quick question is on on have you? I I I I really appreciate the 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 type of mid mid rise typologies that you're developing and um, you know introducing to the market. They are much needed, and I'm wondering if if there were any other uh, maybe access strategies to the building at the corner of Wellington and Kelly Street where um, the use of uh, external stair strategy was kind of minimized or internalized. I, I recognize I will uh, take up a lot of your internal space. Something else that have you explored any other ideas that kind of um, blend a little bit better with with your neighbors to to the, I guess it will be the east where where you really just have a couple of steps leading into the town home. So it's it's that that additional new element that I I don't know if you have looked into any other ways to, of reconciling the stairs with with the, the the character that's immediately next to you. Right, um, Maya, we were we are um, aware of. Uh... You know, we, we are trying to be sensitive to the, the neighbors on the north side. Um, they are stacked units, so we we were um, limited in how low we can push that ground floor as to uh, get enough light into the basement units, uh, which is why by way of landscaping, we're looking at ways to um, kind of buffer that. And, and also, most currently, we're in discussions of how do we bring some architectural element down from these uh, bays so that it kind of uh, frames and maybe provides another level of um, framing that kind of hides that entrance point into those units. So yes, that's something we're actively looking at. Great, thank you. That's, um, that's all my questions, Ben. Thank you, James. Sorry, that mute button is very hard to get rid of. Um, it's it's a fantastic design. I really like it. This is a really in a way, innovative way to get density without being overly aggressive. Um, I was going to ask questions about the Wellington Street um, entrances as well, but I think Uta has covered that. I'm just curious when your design for the site was evolving, and um, having regard to questions about the lower level, did did you look at Main level being created and going four stories in total above grade. Um, I could. Uh, I'm not sure if I could defer this to our planner, but I, I do. I do think that you know, in terms of getting the appropriate density and um, the quality of living space, that uh, a stacked townhouse was preferred. Um, but we understood that there were some issues with stacked houses, mainly being the number of stairs and doors that is required that really eats into the real estate. Um, so I think to keep this quite residential, which would be a townhouse, but to keep it um, efficient in terms of density, that uh, this approach was deemed uh, most appropriate. Okay. Um, and can you just maybe explain the, the rooftop? So in this view, is, is there some form of enclosed amenity space in the rooftop? And, and who gets the benefit of that space? Is it just the units immediately below? Yes, the rooftop is accessed by uh, the four units on the on the top level, which are two-story units. And this is this is a layout of it here. Um, and their their access off of these roof pop ups, which also houses a mechanical room, um, and we're also maybe looking at potentially including a trellis of sorts to further give some more privacy from the neighboring high rise to the south. 
Okay, thanks. Those are all my questions. Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. You there? Yes. Thanks, Vince. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. It's uh, it's actually a great. Uh, I think it's a great package. Uh, pretty clear part T diagram. Uh, I think it's a it's a good concept. Uh, I'm just curious uh, about a few things. Um, initially, I heard that. Did I hear that the tall building guidelines allow you up to twelve stories on the site, or am I misunderstanding something? Um, yeah, forty-four meters. Yeah. To answer that well, question, the second uh, plan uh, has designated as mid-rise, which okay. allows up to twelve stories under that designation. So, you're actually underdeveloping the site from a from that height standpoint, or number of story standpoint. Support. That's the height that's permitted, um, oh. but it would be based on other. Oh, that okay. Uh, that's just the maximum height. It de would depend on okay. other things whether or not that would be appropriate. So I don't understand this. I'm missing something, uh, obviously. The the secondary plan allows you 12 stories, did you say? Yes, correct. But so, but yet you've already hit that height in this case. So we're only at four, three stories above ground. Is there something uh, missing about the height versus the number of stories? Uh, so 12 stories is permitted under the secondary plan and then a maximum of 44 meters is permitted in the zoning. Okay, so again, I'm uh, my question again, uh, I'm correct, right? We're under in terms of height and number of stories, we're considerably below that. We're, we're underdeveloping on this site. I think maybe, Amara, do you want to answer that question? Um, I may defer this to our planner, but from my understanding is that there's um, depending on the lot size, and also I think the fact that there's a heritage road just north of us, um, there was some logic there in terms of why it was supposed to be this height. Can I defer to our planner? I think yes, is just shocked. I, that's that's it. I'm not sure. He's yeah, I mean, on the on it. the on the one hand, it's very noble of you and noble of the developer, but I can't believe it. But uh, I'm just trying to <laughs> I'm trying to understand: is that actually? that you're underdeveloping the site maybe you maybe maybe never never came to, the question never came to you in this way but i feel like uh you know generally when applications come in they're overdeveloping so um you know it's a, it's it's a great that your the design is relating to the street and the context in such a way but uh theoretically there is a lot of uh a lot of height there to fill in, in in the future, and so that implies to me that this is this this certainly is not a temporary condition. Uh, these are all for sale; they're not for rental, right? They are for rental. Okay, so this theoretically might be a temporary condition. So in the future, it could be redeveloped. Uh, well, let me let, let me jump in. It's Brendan Morley. I'm the developer. Okay. But there's multiple factors at play here, including the cultural heritage, um, you know, buildings that are adjacent to the site with 5,000 square feet, you know, you, you have to assemble three or four more of those townhouses, then you're, so after you assemble those, then you're, you know, trying to put together a plan to go up 12 stories, underground parking, it, it you know, it increases the complexity of the overall project to pushes out the timing. Uh, of when you could actually, you know, deliver that building, um, you know, so, so a two year exercise then turns into a 5 to 7 year exercise. Um, you know, so we wanted to build something out of the gate uh, that was respectful of the adjacent cultural heritage buildings, something, um. That was modest in terms of, uh, intensification, um, you know, and be and respectful of the adjacent uh, single family residential uh, houses. So, so yeah, my, my, my focus isn't to maximize density and profit necessarily, you know, we're trying to be thoughtful and respectful of what's in the neighborhood and, and what we're building adjacent to. Okay. Well, I, uh, yes, I, uh, yes, sorry. This, this is probably a site that's over zone, like, in, like our previous application, right? So right. we should be thankful actually that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. 
So uh, I, I commend you <laughs> on that fact. Then, if that's uh, if that's your intent, I I hope uh, I hope things go that way. Um, can I just ask uh, how uh, on a more uh, uh, more sort of uh, planning level, I I enter. How do I enter? Uh, I see a lot of stairs, but how do I get to the basement suite? You would access it off of the courtyard off of the county. So okay, so the courtyard is sunken. Yes. Okay, so I go down the courtyard and then I turn left to the private terraces to go into those units. Yes, so if this is the okay. basic plan, you come down about half a level and yep. those units are directly accessed off the courtyard. Okay, and then similarly on the upper units, I go through those central stairs. So right. for the upper units, to access the ground floor, you come up a few steps directly into these units. And then yep. to access the second floor, you would then go up this one stair similar okay. to the palace street and then the second the the upper two stories are single unit like uh, they're double double two story, unit, right? two -story yes, unit. That's right. okay that's right so you would and, come off of the street and then you would enter the unit itself the and so your only exit from the upper stories is through that one stair right down between the it, units. it is actually the there's two stairs which is why this unique ah, okay the bridge typology of the bridge okay takes okay very smart thank you yeah that's good that's good that works okay um uh, lastly just could you just uh, go over a little bit more about your material strategy and uh, the fenestration because uh, i'm just i have a little bit of a you know an issue with it and i just want to understand better uh, how how you uh conceptualized it in relation to the context and materials surrounding in the surrounding area yeah sure of course um I think we see the predominant material being brick um, at the first two levels. And for the fenestrations, I'm just referring to some of the precedents, um, and then we'll flip back to our rendering. But, uh, you know, a, a brick base that has repetitive, uh, long and linear windows to, you know, be respectful of the heritage to the north that are repetitive, such as this image suggests. And for the top levels, you would introduce either a, um, a metal panel or, you know, this is showing a fiber cement option um, or even or even siding. And we would, we're, look, we're currently looking at differentiating the size of window on the, the top level versus the, the base. Um, I know that in our image here, it's suggesting that they're, they're similar all around, but we're currently looking at making the volume at the top read um, a little different than the base so you know we understand that you know the base is doing its thing where it's you know trying to transition from a heritage building um but then you know there's something more happening at the very top that um, we would like is to that and is that zinc is that like zinc cladding or the metal cladding what 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 do you envision there the, the upper so level this is currently showing a metal cladding a metal panel system um and maybe zinc it could be something else but more recently we're looking at more of a finer detail so a siding that would give you more of a detailed line um more texture that's a bit more residential okay and lastly is this considered a concrete construction or is it wood i would assume it would be wood frame okay okay i'll leave it at that thank you thank you, thank you Jason, tim Thank you, Vince. Um, just one question just back to the, the basement units. Is the reason you have the, the uh, first level, first floor at one meter, I think it's one meters above, is that because you're trying to keep the ground floor windows aligned with those in the neighboring row housing? Is there any reason why you couldn't go to like 1.5 1, 1. meters to get more daylight in? Um, I would have to double check our height there. Uh... We may be actually taller than a meter here. Um, we might be closer to the 1.5. We usually try to meet that minimum of or maximum of 1.5. Um, but yes, there is, um, you know, I'm trying to massage the idea of keeping this uh, datum line um, continuous with the, the north properties, um, but then also the, the functionality of the building to kind of keep it at, at the 1.5 meter. I, it might be closer to the 1.5. Okay, thank you.
Thank you, Tim. Um, just take the chair a minute, to, Tim. Um, I, I think it's a great, uh, a great form of development. I think it's appropriate. I think the context is uh, being respected, and I think the um, um, <clears throat> to put. I mean, I did a little quick thumbnail. I mean, to try and put an apartment building on there would be very difficult. It's too shallow a site to get into parking ramps and all that. It's, there's not a lot of room there. So, and I think the way you treated the opening uh, between the two blocks uh, helps the uh, side yard which otherwise with a zero setback along there, it's uh, somewhat uh, limited, but it will give the opportunity for daylight um, to project into the rear yards of the properties on uh, the neighboring property. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's uh, I think it's very nice form of development. It's a nice fine grain solution. And uh, I think I'll just leave it there. That's a great job. Um, if you would like to hear our summary of comments, um, Sorry, we're, going to uh, now, we're going to recommendations, <laughs> aren't we? Sorry. Um, so let's start with Jackie on the panel advice. Yeah, um, great project. I would just recommend um, watching the renderings if you're going for further public comments. Some of the plants look like they have expired, so that's just uh, <laughs> helpful. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That's right. That's it for me, Vince. Thank you. Robert? Thanks, Vince. Uh, also, thank you for the presentation. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll echo, I guess, some of the comments that came through in the question period, which is um, I'm a big fan of this um, of this proposal um, from an urban design perspective. Um, there's just it's like a kind of a Rubik's Cube and does so many um, just clever things to help um, to help it fit in on um, on a relatively small site, um, I was really surprised to to hear the number of units um, that you need to um, to fit on this site in um, three and a half stories. Uh, really quite um, um, quite amazing. Really, really well done. Um, I hinted at the beginning in my question about the um, the light wells, and you're kind of thinking of. Some of the uh, townhouses that you see in uh, in New York, where you um, you know you dig down and and uh, in front of those windows, um, it, amazing how much more light you can uh, you can let into those basement units if um, if you do something like that. Um, and then my other comment, if you could pull up um, either one of the renderings or an elevation with the bays, um, it, it, just to my eye the. Um, the the size of the windows and I know you've talked that you're the, those are not yet fixed and you're experimenting but they somehow in, within the the pop out bays the windows seem particularly um, particularly small um, but other than that like I say big big fan of this um, of this proposal oh, sorry last thing also echoing other uh, comments made the glass then the number of stairs are up to the the entrances I understand. Um, where that's coming from, the glass railing and even the planting, maybe in front of it, um, particularly along Wellington, um, seems out of um, with the rest of the area. So maybe looking at um, some other kind of railing uh, glass to help that minimize that um, the additional steps up to the front entrance. And those are my comments. Thank you. That's a great notice. Thank you. Is that it, Robert? That's it. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Ida? Well, thank you, Vince. Um, thank you, Elmira. Really, really clever little Rubik's Cube. Um, I think my only comment is going back to that frontage. There, if there's any massing or materiality or planting that you can introduce to really uh, create uh, more of a, the same plane or follow the same plane that current existing heritage homes defined next to you. I think it will go into kind of um, without, you know, creating a full fake Victorian home at the, at the, at the corner, you, you kind of punctuate that corner with a very contemporary, very smart building, but also with a, a building that kind of follows that, that street plane and it's not uh, an, 
kind of a, a just an added hiccup in in the in the way the, the the stairs and the entrances are shown right now it doesn't bother me as much on on the other entrance but it's just that the, you have such an amazing wall defining the street on wellington and suddenly you have this other feature that really quite don't doesn't work um i love the the the, the suggestion and, and i'm glad that you're considering um looking into a metal cladding that becomes a little bit more residential in nature and uh, looking forward to see what what other textures you can introduce so it's not as um i, I mean it doesn't read industrial uh, or or institutional but it's uh it will be a welcome addition to, to the materiality of your building I think being this uh, a typology that we have been trying to push in many, many other cities, I highly recommend that you, you go for an award once uh, you, you build this. Thank you. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Yuta. James? Uh, thank you, Vince. Um, again, I agree 100%. I mean, this is... This is <laughs> It's unique because it's underdeveloping and it's and it's setting, in fact, a fantastic precedent for, you know, uniquely creative solutions to a site to provide, you know, good and adequate housing with some really neat and interesting characteristics. Um, and sorry to come back and belabor the point, but I but I but I agree with the comments that you've heard with regards to the importance of Wellington Street. I note that you're in a bit of a wrestling match with the city with regards to road widenings and daylighting triangles. Um, two of the criteria for waiving of those requirements deal with uh, built form considerations and heritage considerations. So I think that just adds another layer of relevance and importance to you know, the significance of, of that facade and how you're going to treat it as potentially an argument to the city to say, you know, if, if you don't take the road widening and if you eliminate that daylighting triangle, it otherwise destroys the corner. Um, we can deliver uh, an urban design contribution to the streetscape that will be you know, a fantastic addition. You're slightly proud and forward of those buildings, which I think why it's it's so important um, that there be a, an emphasis on trying to arrange that entrance in a way that tries to mimic not not in terms of architecture, not full heritage, but you know, good contemporary architecture that tries to bring forward those key elements about the entrances oriented to the street. Um, and that's all. Again, you know, great project, really innovative. I hope, I hope uh, not just Preston setting, but I hope people follow along with this type of approach to smaller infill sites. Thank you, James. Yasin? Um, yeah, just uh, again, I uh, echo everybody else's comments. Uh, I think it's a great, uh, great project. Um, happy to hear you're underdeveloping and uh, hope it stays that way. And uh, um, I, I think generally just overall, I, I'm uh, right to the core. I, I think it's a really interesting party and simple, uh, simple moves. Um, I, I personally think you could you could follow some of your precedents particularly of that example of the brick building which actually only dealt with one material because uh, this is a small enough building that could uh, have one material yeah that one on the right um, I particularly you know I, I like the the kind of rigor of that of the brick material and what it could do for the elevation but um, you know I, I think it can work with the cladding as well if you if you want to change it but um i'm, I'm curious uh, just going back to a question why why this the window proportions seem a little bit uh, uh odd in the sense that the windows are you have double windows on the ground floor but up above it's a single window pattern and they l seem a little stiff uh you know the elevation is a little bit stiff and staccato is what i'd say like it's just punched windows um, it's not sort of open and gracious. So I'm kind of curious because you're projecting and creating a bay outside. So I would try to get the, you know, some, some larger windows, some more transparency to the upper portion because it feels a little bit uh, uh, rigid in some ways when in fact it's quite a, quite a loose sort of, you know, interesting concept. So 
um, I was just uh, that's what I would suggest. Uh, I'm concerned about the the fact that the window patterns look so small compared to the rest of the materials. And uh, uh, so, yes, and I should say that um, we're we're quite happy to hear that feedback because you know what we were looking at this week was changing those windows in yep. exactly the same direction where they'd be a little Good. bit more contemporary, they'd be larger, they'd be a little more asymmetrical. Yep. Um, we were just kind of waiting to see the comments from today, and it's kind of uh, really sort of guys are progression on those so we feel good about that so thank you yeah just yeah that example you have and there, there's a ton of examples uh european examples where masonry buildings are quite common so um these kind of um, mid-rise buildings work they i think work can work well with a single material but uh you know i'm looking forward to seeing what actually happens so it's good thank you thank you yasa tim Thanks, Vince. Uh, I don't have much more to add. This this is a great project, and I think there's just the three, from my standpoint, three three things to address, which is I think the most part been raised. Is there's the conflict between the the entry stair uh, and the the window there to the basement units there to to deal with, and I think I think Robert made a really good point that the, the landscaping actually isn't appropriate on on Wellington. Uh, I always hate to take away landscaping from a project, but I think in this case, it, it really uh, is out of character with that streetscape. So um, that might give you the opportunity to do something different with the stairs there to to avoid that that conflict there. But I'll, I'll just leave that with you. Um, I'm glad you're reconsidering the the metal cladding. I mean, I, I like the contrast, but. To me, the brick is not dominant now. If anything, the, the cladding is dominant, particularly on, on the way, well, on both both frontages. And, it, you know, arguably the brick should be more dominant. And I and I do agree with yes. And if there's a way to make the whole build, both buildings all brick, all the better. But I appreciate the massing approach you've taken here. Um, was really about premised on kind of the, the two contrasting materials. So. You know, I like the look of the building. I think it'd be a bit more respectful if they're, if the masonry was more more dominant. Um, and I thought I was going to have a third thing to mention, but uh, it's uh, slipped my mind. But these are just minor things. I think this is again a fantastic project. So uh, well done. Thank you, Tim. Um, I have no further comments. I think the panels. Um, been um, quite supportive of this application and um, if you need a summary comments now of what you've heard or if you uh, are comfortable with what you've heard and you can take it forward from here that'd be great and uh, then we can call this meeting to a close thank you any for your comments at all the proponent at all No, I think I think we uh, heard the comments a lot of clear and we appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Vince, it's, it's Shannon. Could I just, uh, as we close off here, could I just ask the panel members to stay on for a quick minute about the rest of the meetings for the rest of the year, if you wouldn't mind? Sure. Thank you. Okay, so we'll stay on. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Please you. Adjourn. Thank you. Thank you.